has a way of working all those things out. A mattress in the rain. Praise God. <laughs> Just laughing to myself. Save a little bit of a marital conflict a little bit later on. Right? <laughs> Married people can say that to one another. I want to ask that you would turn with me, please, to uh, Mark chapter 4. What I want to speak about this morning, uh, what the Lord wants me to speak about, is the parable of the soils, the parable of the sower. And we're probably going to speak about it for a couple weeks because the parable of the sower is so important. It unlocks the other parables. Uh, the Lord says, if you get this, you'll get the others. So in Mark chapter 4, verse 10, we'll start there together, and I'm going to read a bunch of verses to you. Sorry to read so much scripture in church, but... <laughs> <laughs> and when he was alone, they, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But up to them that are without. All these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see and not perceive, in hearing they may hear and not understand. Lest any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know you not this parable? There's a question mark there. And how then will you know all parables? Again, there's a question mark there. The sower sows the word, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately. Satan comes immediately. Satan comes immediately. And takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they had heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves. And so endure for a time afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, doesn't just say for our sake or for our mistake's sake, but for the word's sake. Immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things entering in choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, receive it, and bring forth some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundredfold. When we read the parable of the sower, it's important for us to know that the word of God, the gospel, the good news, is the seed. It's important for us to know that Jesus is the sower, but also we are sowers as we speak the word and we follow after Jesus' example. It's also important for us to know it, 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 as we read these scripture verses, uh, as it said in verse 13 or 15, it speaks about the soil. The soil is the hearts of men. Sometimes people present the, the gospel in a sense that, uh, that the wayside are unsaved people. But what's being presented here is that the parable of the sower, in the parable of the sower, it's, it's being presented that the gospel is being shared and there are types of hearts and types of heart conditions that we can have. Probably all of them will apply to us as we go through the, the, the verses, we all need to know this, that it's about our heart condition. And I say it very often, it's, it's about having the right heart. And God is concerned with our heart condition. If you look in the scriptures, if we look in this parable, in this verse, it's not Jesus that determines the fruit. Be careful what I'm saying, about to say. It's not the, the word that brings the return. If you look in the scriptures, what brings, what's the determinative factor in the harvest? It's the heart. It's the soil. It's the ground that the word is being planted in. We all need to know this parable because it sets up the other parables. God does things in an, escalate, an escalation, an accumulation. He builds line upon line, precept upon precept. There are many times in the scriptures, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 46, God says the first, first thing that comes is going to be the natural. I know he's speaking in this verse about Adam, first being the, the first Adam, but then Jesus being Ben-Adam, the second Adam coming for us. One caused the fall of all, man, all mankind, and one brought the redemption of all mankind. But it speaks about the natural preceding the supernatural. 
That's important for us to know. Because if, as a church, we want to see the supernatural take place. We, wanna, we want God to do things that only He can do. But those, that means that natural things have to be done so that we can get to the supernatural. See, there's an accumulation. There, there's a building up of. We see in David's life that David, before he slayed a Goliath, before there was ever a Goliath, what was there? There was a lion and a bear in the field. When he was being, somebody right here is, you might be thinking, as God's building upon you, you might be thinking, well, you know what, is what I'm doing seen? Well, maybe man doesn't see everything that you're doing, but God certainly does. And what you do in private, God will bless you publicly for. It says that in Matthew chapter, in the, the Beatitudes, it speaks about that. It says, what we do in private, God will bless us publicly for those things. And not that we do them to be blessed publicly, but God wants to put his hand and his stamp of approval upon you so that you can be a light to the world, that they can see your good works and that they can give glory to your Father in heaven. There's been a lot of glory that's been brought to God's name through this backpack outreach, through the things that you're doing as a ministry. There's been a lot of glory. People are like, wow, you know what, it's amazing to see the church being active in the community. We're called to be light and soul. We're called to show love to other people so that they would recognize the difference in us. And we can point to Jesus and say, he's the one who made all the difference. He's the hero of this story. He's the hero of this story. He's the superhero. No, but we see there's an escalation, a building up. In Jeremiah, I, I caught in Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 5. Jeremiah is speaking there and he's saying, at first you, gotta be, you have to be able to run with the footmen before you can run with the horses. He's saying that there's a season and a time for someone that here that some people are in their season. And the Lord is saying to you, run. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. That, that all of that per preparation that you did has gotten you to the season. There's other, there are other people that are working towards that season. But first, we have to be able to run with the footmen before we can run with the horses. It says in the scriptures in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, it says, first, we have to learn to drink milk before we can eat meat. So there's a building, building up and strengthening. And this parable is the, the parable that sets up the other parables. It's very clear because it says it in Scripture in Mark chapter 4, verse 13. It says, And he said unto them, Know you not that this parable... How are you going to know the other parables? <laughs> this parable sets up the other parables. It says in Luke chapter 16, one of my life verses, yours too, because God has done some things in your life. Some of you are where you are only because of your commitment to the Lord. Only because of your commitment to the Lord. Because you kept the Lord first. He was able to position you in a place of favor and blessing. Some of you, because of your commitment to the Lord, He brought you through dark places or difficult times. Because of your commitment to the Lord, you didn't follow your feelings, but you went by faith. You walked by faith, not by sight. God was able to. There are some things that God is going to bring us into only because of our faith in Him. Only because we can hear and we're, we are able to discern the still, small voice of the Holy Spirit. I believe now more than ever, our spiritual senses need to be attuned to what God is speaking to us. Not to our feelings, not to emotions, and not that feelings are a bad thing. But feelings sometimes have led me in the wrong direction. Feelings are meant to be a good servant, but they're a very poor master. The master, there's only one person meant to be on the throne, and that's King Jesus, as he leads us and guides us and directs us. Our spiritual senses need to be brought up, to be honed, so that we can become more proficient in the use of them, so that we can discern, as it speaks about in Hebrews chapter 5, rightly dividing the word of truth in this season. God is calling you and I to be a light and a witness. And there are going to be things that the world is dealing with and people are dealing with that we right now don't have the wisdom to handle. But God will give, them that, give us that wisdom through His Scriptures. He'll deposit the Word and His harvest coming, I believe, to many of you. It's the condition of a heart that the Lord is speaking about in this verse, in this parable. He says, neither the seed, it's very clear, neither the seed... No other sower, other determinative factor. What I want is I want to make sure that my heart is always right. I don't want the Lord just to be able to get a 30-fold increase from my heart. I don't want Him to get a 60-fold, and neither do you. We want Him to get a 100-fold return. 
And this is what the Lord was saying to me over and over and over and over again. The harvest is in the heart. The heart is what determines the harvest. See, it's it, the condition of our heart as we receive the word. As we receive the word, some, there are some people as we go into the scripture, I'm going to show you how important the heart is. It says in Mark chapter 4 verse 15. It says, and these are they, God bless you, by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately. Satan comes immediately. Satan comes immediately. Satan's going to come, Satan's going to come right now. He's going to come with distractions. He's going to come trying to divert our attention. Sometimes it's almost like we have to train our spirits, uh, discipline ourselves unto godliness so that we can receive the word. I, I learned that I need to be very attentive as people are delivering the word. It, there was a time where I, I was blessed that I was able to sit and to, to sit under people many, very often and receive the word from them. But I had to train my ear to listen. I believe that there are some people in this sanctuary today that are meant and called to deliver the gospel from a pulpit. But all of us are called to deliver the word to somebody to preach and to declare. And I want to say this to you too. Is that if you can't celebrate the person who's delivering the word as they're delivering it, God will cause that condition to be repeated for you as you deliver the word. I heard T.D. Jake say one time, it's like, uh, it was a pretty amazing thing that he had said. He said he was, he was called and he was anointed because he was able to celebrate other preachers as they were delivering the word. Amen. I'm not talking about in the church service, but how are you when other people are delivering the word? Are you, are you celebrating them? Are you encouraging them? Because that's what we're called to do. We're called to encourage one another and exhort one another and sowing the word, but also preparing our heart to receive because there's always something to receive for all of us as the word is delivered. The hearts of men. And it's all about the heart condition. What does God say in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23? It tells you, keep your heart with all diligence. Fat of it flow the issues of life. Keep your heart. I was like, what do you mean keep? It means guard. Protect. Protect the word that is being sown into your heart. I, write notes. I know sometimes these things are foreign because you know what? We, it's, it's, it depends on the attitude that we come to service or we live stream. There's been so many times where the word, I was like, wow, you know what? That was an amazing revelation that went through. But then after the service or after listening to the message, I wasn't able to remember it. Maybe you can. I can. I have to write it down. So that I could go back later on and study. We're called to study the word, not just listen. Not just hear, but to study to show ourselves approved. Workmen who needeth not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. The goal for us family is so that we can deliver the word to other people. And they're hungry for it. They're hungry. 70% of people, they said that they would come. A, a couple weeks ago, I, I spoke a message. And 70% of people would come to a church service if they were invited by a friend or a family member. And you guys are doing a great job. There's a lot of new... How many, how many people are here for the very first time? I raise their hands. Thank you for coming. Amen. Thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you for coming, family. Thank you for inviting. Thank you for... Because that's what our call is. To help other people to taste and see that the Lord is good. We're called to keep our heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. It says, that, it says in the scriptures in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, it says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so shall he be. It's the condition of the heart. And I, I determine, you determine the condition of our heart as we bring it before the Lord. It's up to us as farmers to prepare our heart to hear the word so that it can bring not a 30-fold increase, but a, or not a 60-fold increase, but a hundredfold. You know, I, yesterday I, I prayed. I prayed it because I wasn't sure I was going to be able to preach. A brother of mine went home to be with the Lord. A close friend, Mike Johnson, went home to be with the Lord. You know, very, he, very peacefully. He had his book open. Francis Fran Japan. He was reading Three Battlegrounds. The Lord took him home. And I, I felt, a, I'm being honest with you, I felt a little discouraged. 
jumped on me. But then the Lord spoke to me as I was praying. That was what Mike was all about. He used to say to me, Pastor, he's saying, you do what you do. You let me do the other stuff hmm. so that you can do. He says, because it's all about getting the word out. I mean, the man, is there a perfect one amongst us? But the man's heart was always to do and to serve. He was one of the first members of the church. And you know, in an age where people are disposable, the man used to say to me all the time, he's like, this is my church. I love my church family. He's like, I'm not going anywhere, Pastor. You don't ever have to worry about me. I'm, I'm here. I may not be perfect, but I'm going to serve. And he served. And he was faithful. And he delivered the word. And his heart was always to receive. I'm blessed by the man. He told me, he used to say to me, it's all about getting the word out and about people's hearts. And when you know what softens people's hearts? It's the love of God. It's loving on them. In spite of sometimes, just loving upon them. And that's what we're here for. We're here to dedicate. You know, this is, it's not just, and, and it's, it's great, all of the different things, but it's about introducing people to God. Making sure that the word is getting forth and then preparing the hearts. I'm encouraged by Mike. I know that you are. I want to ask that you would keep his family in prayer. I want to ask that you would keep each other in prayer. And this is what I got a vision of. Mike and the others that went before us, Peter and Joe and the members of this body, Dave Alley. I see them greeting us, greeting us on our day. And they're just welcoming us and telling us. And, and this is what they're saying right now. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Run your race. Run your race to the fullest. That's what I, I hear them saying in my spirit. Run your race. We ran our race. Now you run your race. They passed off the baton and now it's up to us to continue on. Preparing our hearts so that we can receive the word and the Lord can bring forth a hundredfold return. It says, trust in the Lord. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Sometimes we read them and they almost become cliche, but the message is so intertwined and the Lord is making such an important point. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Why? Because it's the heart condition. It tells us even in salvation that we are to believe in our heart and confess with our, mark, with our mouth. It's so important, the condition of our heart, so that we can receive the word. There are going to be some warnings that are given to us in a parable of the soils so that we can prepare our heart to bring forth the greatest increase. It says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth shall speak. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5 tells us, love the Lord with all your heart. It tells us in, uh, in 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 15, sanctify the Lord, set the Lord apart in your heart. Elevate Him. This morning we talked about it in Genesis when Satan came, Satan came very subtle and deceptive. The way that Satan came was he, he, he deceived Eve, and it comes very subtly. Not, and subtle is different than subtle. Subtle is deceptive. Satan came, and this is what, it, all throughout Genesis chapter 2, it speaks about the Lord God. And in Hebrew, it says Yahweh Elohim, or Yahweh Adonai. But then, when God, when, when the enemy spoke, he doesn't say the Lord God. He just says God. He diminished God just a little bit. And that's the way the enemy is going to work. He's going to diminish God to you a little bit. He's the accuser of the brethren. He's the slander. He's out to keep your heart from receiving the word. And he's going to come immediately. He's going to send the foul of the air to steal the word. But we have to be mindful and guard and protect the word as it's coming forth. And one of the ways that we can do that is re-listen to a message. Surround ourselves with the word. Regular devotional times. Why is it so important? It's because we're tilling the soil of our heart to bring forth an increase. And it's not about possessions. It's about souls. About lives being touched. It's very clear in this parable. It tells us, not, don't be deceived. It's not about possessions. The, a man's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Sometimes possessions own us and we don't own them. It tells us in, this, the, in the other parables, here are some so that we would know how important it is. And I declared this over this body this morning. Here's my declaration. There's four types of soil. Only, and three of them 
are not very productive. That means 75% of hearers are not going to hear. 25% are going to hear. And this is what I declared. All of you are in the 25%. I declare that over you. Last night I was always praying. I pray that this, every person in this sanctuary, every person that's live streaming, I gotta declare over you that you're part of the 25%, that you have fertile ground, and that you're gonna bring forth a hundredfold increase. But this is what it shows us in the scriptures. And I don't wanna be a statistic, I don't want you to be a statistic. 75% are not going to hear the word and not bring forth an increase. It says one out of ten lepers came back to Jesus and were made whole. I don't want to settle for a healing. I don't want you to settle just for a healing. I want God to make you whole and to do everything that he said in his word. I want to see all of those precious promises be fulfilled in your life, but not just your life, your children's lives and your children's children's lives. We live for men, Jill and I, like, and you as well, for men like Mike. Who made a miraculous change and became on fire for God. A year ago, I spoke with him, and I didn't mean, I didn't mean to, to speak about Mike. I, just, I prayed with the minister yesterday, and the Lord just told me, he said to me, just speak from your heart. You know, a year ago, Mike was like dealing with the world, and he said, you know, Pastor, he's like, I just feel like I need to give more to the, to the church and to the kingdom. He made a decision and he battled with it to leave the thing, to leave mammon and the world behind so that he could come into, and he, three months ago, he dedicated his time and his energy. He said, I'm going to go into, I'm going into ministry. I'm going to help in any way that I can. And that's what he exactly did. Three out of four hearts are not going to hear. One out of 10 lepers were made whole. Five of the 10 virgins were prepared. One of the two were in the field. One of the two grinding at the mill. Those, those odds are pretty bad. Did you, did you see that? Only one out of two, that's 50%. Only one out of 10, that's 10%. I don't want you to be a statistic. I don't want to be a statistic. I want you to be an anomaly. That's what I declare over you. You're an anomaly. You, you set the standard. You deviate from the norm. You're not called to be mediocre. You're called to be extraordinary. You're called to be different. The way that we'll do that is we prepare our hearts. And this is all that we have to do is prepare our hearts and God will do the rest. He will bring forth the increase. In Mark chapter 4 verse 15, it tells us that it's up to us to receive the word. And this is what it says in that verse. And these are by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word. That was sown in their hearts. You know what the wayside is? The wayside was the road. It was, a, it was the road that was well traveled. And this is what the Lord started to speak to me. Busyness. That's the first one. Busyness. God didn't call you to do everything. He didn't call you to say yes to everything. He called you to say yes to Him. He called you and I to not be busy and entangled with the things of this world. Sometimes people, as I speak to them, they're, they're so busy with other stuff, but that God is always going to give you enough time. And this is so simple, but yet so profound. He's always going to give you enough time to do what you were meant to do. To love the people you're meant to love. To spend time with Him. He's never going to... Martin Luther King Jr. said something that was so profound to me that as I was in school. He said, and I didn't know that he was a minister of the gospel as we were studying. They left all of that out. But as I was reading another work of his, he said, it's going to be an exceptionally busy day today. I need to spend more time with God. Hmm. Hmm. That's good. Sometimes people are like, oh, it's busy. My time with God's going to get crowded. My service unto the Lord is going to get crowded out. I say to you, that's the first danger. The first soil. Here I call them, the, I, I, I was reading a book and it was called The Killer Peas. So I stole it from the book. I don't remember the book, but I'm going to... You know, well, there's a term for people having a fear of missing out. You know what it's called? You, who, did you say it? Oh, okay. FOMO. Fear of missing out. People, I mean, it's a term. 
They even do that now so it's quick to text. But here are the killer P's, pride. Pride will keep you busy, It'll keep you going. You have to be the best at everything. Just let it go. You're not called to be the best at everything. You're called to be the best at something. People pleasing, pats on the back, performing. You're not a trained monkey. Well, seriously, sometimes people, it's, like, they're, they're, it's, it's about their performance. You know, they compare, they got have what I call comparisonitis. They're comparing themselves to other people all the time. Well, forget about comparing yourself to somebody else. You know, sometimes, this is what I say, I don't even know if that person's going to make it. I need to compare myself to Jesus. He's the one. I'm, I, and it, maybe I could become like another man. I don't want to set myself up to be like another man. I don't want you to set yourself to be up like another man. You might be able to attain that, but Jesus... Raise the bar in our lives and living for the Lord and being becoming just like Him. Sometimes the killer P is possessions. Where, where are the rich young rulers of the world? I know that that's not a popular thing to say in this. People who live in the poverty level in this country are more wealthy. Than, I, I think about that all the time. I'm like, oh my God, I'm the rich young ruler. We are. There are people... They're living of the 7 billion people on this planet. I mean, it's like we are in the top percentiles of the wealth in this world. I want to make sure because there's a lie that Satan uses, the deceitfulness of riches. There's also pity and poor planning. And here's, a, here's a big one for the, some of the younger generation. Who, who said it? I heard it. Go ahead, say it. Posting. There are some people that are living their lives. I want you to know this, family. All you see on Facebook is fake. Facebook. It's fake book. It's the tip of the iceberg. I, I heard people come to me and say, well, I, I look at all those people on Facebook and I just like think. I'm like, that's not the truth of their life. They're putting the best so there, and everybody's doing it. Just forget about all of that stuff. Just live your life. Do your best unto the Lord. Don't get caught up in the busyness, family, is what the, I believe is being said in this one. The wayside. Don't get caught up in the busy. People in the world today will use busyness as a badge of honor. I'm busy. About what? For what? For what? Running a race and running a race and running a race. These are the things that the Lord has called us. The Lord has called us to a rhythmic pace. These are the four, three R's. Rhythmic, relational, and resolute. A rhythmic pace is this. Regularly withdraw for communion with God and commit to that. Regularly withdraw to commune with God. Second one is relational. Keep God first. You'll never go wrong by keeping God first in your life. Making the regular time. Watch out for busyness. There are other, there are other ones that we go, we'll be going over, but be careful about being too busy and saying yes to everything. The next one is resolute. When the wind and the waves come, then they will. Jesus didn't allow the wind and the waves to drown out the Father's voice, did he? When he went through the storm, where was Jesus in the midst of the storm? Taking a nap. He was so confident in what his Father was doing. I want that. I want that. I have to be honest with you, sometimes I don't have that. It's like sometimes things are going on in the cares of the world and different things. Maybe, maybe, I'm, not, maybe I'm speaking to the wrong crowd. Maybe, you, you, maybe you're, you've elevated past that. But Jesus is showing us an example. He's got it all well under control. Amen. For somebody in this sanctuary, some of you need to let go of control. Control is an illusion. You're trying to control things, and some, I, I feel this in my spirit, very strongly. For some of you, when you let go of control, it's going to start to grow and get better. God's being hindered for, by some of us being in control. And sometimes people have gone through trauma and difficulty, and they've learned to, to manage and work things out. I say to you, family, if that's you, let go, because control is an illusion. None of us really has any control. But let's make the time, and let's be resolute. Let's, not, let's make time for the Lord and let's make time for one another. Here's what, one of the things that 
I learned from Mike. Mike always told me he would always, he would always make time for people. In the midst of everything that was going on, he would just make time. His course would just change, and I, I learned that from him. And he, would, he had this gift, and, and it's just something, and some of you have it too. But it's, he had this gift for making people feel special and exhorting them in the time. You know, none of us knows when our time is going to come. That's why what was so important, because I know what Mike, Mike would have said to us this morning. He would have said to us, he said, Pastor, make sure that you celebrate. He's like, I'm okay. This is the confirmation. I'm okay. You guys just make sure that you keep running the race and doing what, what's most important and getting the word out. He's receiving his rewards right now. Amen. I can feel his prayers for you and for I. Let's pray for his family as we go through this season and this time. Can I, can I have an exhortation to you from the Lord? Some of you, the Lord is jealous for your time. You're not doing something sinful, but for some of you, he's, he's jealous for your time. He's like, where are you, son, daughter? You're busy about doing things, and it's not, there's, there's nothing wrong with doing things. But there's a season I believe he's calling us all to, is to, to, to just sit at his feet. This one thing is needful. And maybe you are a Martha. There's nothing to be wrong with being a Martha, being active. But in this season, I really believe that the Lord is calling some of us, even Marthas, to be Marys, to spend a little bit more time. Some of you have been through hell and back. And you need to be saturated in the presence of God. You need the Lord to, to love upon you and to bring healing to you. I believe he's calling some of you back. Is, it, is that speaking to anybody? Spirit, the Lord is calling you for a more intimacy, a closer walk. God, God, raise your hand if, if that's you. Raise, that, raise your hand if that's you. May I ask that the worship team will come forward. There's an enemy that we're facing, and it's busyness. We live in a fast food generation. People get upset if they're dinner doesn't come through the drive through window fast enough. Everything is disposable. When you go into the supermarket and everything is quick, quick, quick. Speedway. Energy drinks. Everything about going faster and faster and faster and faster. And the Lord's saying, be content. Enjoy the season that you're in. Enjoy the time that you have. Celebrate the the, the blessings that he has already given to you. Be content. The grass isn't greener on the other side. Sometimes the grass is greener because it's over the septic tank. Do you have a nice worshipful song, Pastor Smitty? Nice intimate song for us to worship the Lord? Hey, I became a pastor, you know why? For people like Mike. Imperfect, but love God. Wanted to become like God. God's not impressed with our perfectness. He's not impressed with our schedule. He's not impressed with our possessions. He's not impressed with our prestige. He's impressed with our heart condition. There's only one thing that God has ever been after. It's your heart. Who is it this morning that will, that will bring that heart before the Lord? Say, that's what, maybe you're like me. Hey, God, I got nothing to give you but this. And he's saying, that's all I ever wanted, son. That's all I ever wanted, daughter. Who is it that will come in to the altar and worship the Lord? So please come as you're ready. That's all he wants. He just wants you. I even feel like this. He doesn't even want your possessions. I almost want to give you your tithe back. He's jealous for you. Let's prepare our hearts.
Spirit, speak to us. None of us is claiming to have arrived. All of us need work. Lord, we on purpose till the soil of our heart. We want our hearts, Lord, to be prepared for the word that you sow. Let it bring forth a great increase. Not 30, not 60, but a hundredfold. I thank you that my brothers and my sisters, Lord, are all fertile ground. Lord, we lay claim to that, Lord. That every person within the sound of my voice is part of that 25%. The one in the four that will bring forth a hundredfold return. I thank you, Lord, that there will be a harvest that will be felt in their lives, in their children's lives, in their children's children's lives. That you've called them, Lord, to not be statistics, but anomalies. Father, that people would see your hand upon their lives. They'll ask, how could all that be done? How could all that be accomplished? How could there be such favor on your lives? And that we would share with them the reason of our faith. We'll share with them not just our hero, but our superhero, King Jesus. The way, the truth, and the life. We choose, Lord, to be resolute about setting time aside for you, the most important person in the universe on either side of heaven. Busyness will not crowd you out of our calendar. That we would have regular time with you, Lord, so that you can download into us your life, your strength. Wash away the filth of this world, Lord. As we spend time with you, Lord, we thank you that you will regenerate us, rejuvenate us, I feel times of refreshing coming to, to his people. That he's going to supercharge you. I even feel that there are times where you'll take a step back to spend time with him and that more will be accomplished. Greater fruitfulness will come forth from your lives. What perspiration couldn't do, inspiration of the Holy Spirit will do. New zeal, new energy, new gifts, new passions, new ingenuities. I feel business strategies coming to people. Complex family problems being worked out with new wisdom that the Holy Spirit will birth. Greater discernment being given to his people. There are others that hurt and pain that they've carried for years, some for decades. This healing in a quiet place the Lord is going to bring. Don't be afraid of the silence, family. For some, that's the greatest amount of peace that they've had all week.
I declare over my brothers and my sisters that they would be like Jesus in the boat, filled with peace, no matter what's going on around them, Lord, that, that they wouldn't just not be affected, but they would change the environment. I see some of you walking into environments where people are filled with fear and worry and anxiety and peace enveloping them. Father, I thank you, Lord, for making us change agents. We lift up Mike and his family to you and we thank you for comfort for them. We celebrate a life well lived for you. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the privilege of knowing him, but also, Lord, that we would run in this next season, Lord, for those that went before us, Peter and Joe and Dave and Mike and James and other loved ones. We thank you, Lord, that we'll see them again and that they'll celebrate with us and that they're interceding for us right now, that we would run this leg of the race the best that we've ever run, abiding, believing, and trusting in you. We bless you and we thank you for being the awesome and the wonderful God that you are. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Jesus loves you, so do we. I just want to make sure that everybody...